My name is Nagarnai Thomas, in case anybody hasn't met me, um, and I'm helping to be a process facilitator for this session, but also I have a little bit of content um, thrown in there as well. Okay? Great. So I'll start with <coughs> quite strongly. In Chapter 1, we're thinking about youth and agricultural research and development, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Are there good things happening? Are there bad things happening? Are there really ugly things happening when it comes to the youth um, in this sector? The chap chapter two is a green dream. You know, are there still young people interested in agriculture? We believe there are, and we want to focus some of these growing talents um, series on, on people who are still, young people who are still interested in agriculture. Also, there's a lot of young people who are making agricultural knowledge travel in different ways. We started to see it already at the share fair. Um, and they'll be featured in chapter three. Uh, chapter four is carrying on the fight for gender equality. It's not over. Um, some people say, oh, you know, that was a certain generation, but there's young, young women and young men who are still fighting for gender equality. Um, youth behind the scenes, people, some of these young people that are doing a lot of really good work, but we never see them. They're in laboratories, they're in ICT labs, they're in GIS labs. We never get a chance to really see them. There's also mapping for the future. There's a big movement of young people who are interested in geospatial data and analysis um, and who are using this as tools to support their communities, um, to learn better about how to manage their natural resources. Um, youth and innovation, a wide chapter. There's a lot of young people out there doing really innovative things when it comes to agricultural research and development, running platforms, devising new methodologies, um, and there's, there's, there are youth getting their hands dirty. We have people out there in the field who are running trials, who are doing field work, and we want to hear their, their perspectives too. And um, coming up to the, the COP16 that's happening in December, we also really want to have a feature on, on youth who are concerned with climate change. This is something that's going to affect uh, certain generations more as they, get, as they get older, and they're really concerned, and they come in with a different type of passion. And then also, those who are giving back, young people themselves who are saying, hey, I've learned skills, I have ideas, and I want to train and do capacity building um, with other young people. So those are our chapters, and we're looking for growing talent. Maybe some of you in the room are growing talent, um, and some of you in the room are uh, helping to grow talent. And we're happy to do interviews with you. We're happy to have you as a guest blogger. We can do podcasts. We can do whatever to really get those voices out. So make sure to contact us. Um, I just run through a few. Um, Courtney Paisley, who's here, was our first uh, growing talent. She's the coordinator of YPAR, and she's going to talk about that a bit more. She's in the chapter one, really thinking about what are some of the issues and opportunities around youth in agricultural research and development. Um, somehow I managed to uh, be, get, get in the listing. Um, my work on making agricultural knowledge travel is there. And then our latest one is Stephen Cabet, um, and he's, he's an interesting young guy from Kenya who's been really trying to use geospatial analysis to help his community deal with problems of soil erosion. And this, this one is extremely moving, um, reading that, and then there's a link to a small video clip that we did with him at the African Agricultural Geospatial Week, where he was one of the young people who were sponsored, given an opportunity to present his first time presenting at a scientific conference, um, which it was an amazing experience for him, and he actually won the prize for the best first time presenter, um, and now is, a, is trying to get involved with Wi-Fi and knowledge sharing using his new <laughs> laptop computer that he won um, for, for exposing himself like that. So. And that's, yeah, that's a little bit about what we're doing with the youth and trying to, to showcase what they're doing in agricultural research. So we're a research organization, but I work for a program called the ICTKM program, which is focusing on information and communication technologies and knowledge management. And one thing that we are doing right now is we're setting up a, a feature series on our website, mostly done through blogs, um, called Growing Talent. Uh, it's a bit of a play on words. So the people who are already growing themselves with talent, um, but also featuring others who may be helping to grow talent in the agricultural sector. And we're doing this to celebrate the International Year of the Youth, which started in August. Uh, sort of a funny 
I always thought these international years went with the calendar year, but apparently not. Apparently we can start an international year whenever, so I think it's great. So, um, and that's going to say 2001, sorry, that's going to say 2010. <laughs> Otherwise, that's a long year. Um, so, in order to celebrate the year of the, the youth, we want to do in our program um, celebrate and hear the voices of young people in agricultural research and development. Um, my, my pictures went all out of, a little bit out of what? Um, our opening blog was by Enrico Pocari, who's sitting in the back there, who talks about why we set up this, this feature series, um, her work with, with young people and capacity building, and also the, the strong relationship between young people in agricultural research and development 